Well, good day, folks. As you know, we really don't have time to do videos much anymore. And, uh, and we've covered about every topic that, uh, that I think uh, YouTube can bear. Anything else is available in our, in our workshops. Anyway, thought I'd get this one just because it's a little bit different. <clears throat> you can see it's uh, what I would call pre-restoration stage. It, uh, it looks like some work has been started, but there's a long ways to go. And so we're just going to do a quick little walk around and overview. I believe this is a 1972 VW bus. And we, of course, are going to convert it to electric like so many others. But most of the ones we see are, are the earlier ones, although we do do this vintage. Um, they're just not as popular as the early ones. And uh, most of the ones we see are typically restored. Not always. And this is an example of a, a not always. So, that's kind of the outside. So let's take a look at the inside. I don't think we're going to see any surprises. Door slides nice and easy. That's good to see. So you can see they've started doing a few things. Cleaning and prepping. And but in a project like this, there's a lot of work. A lot of work, folks. I'm talking about the restoration. The conversions, they're pretty routine. Stock looking dash setup. Take a look at the other side here. This actually brings back memories for me looking at the dash since my parents had a 1972 Campmobile that they bought brand new. Actually purchased it in 1971 when I was in high school. And um, so, yeah, sat behind the wheel of one of these things for many a mile. So this one has seen better days and of course a lot of years have gone by since this was new. Take a look at the engine bay. Fuel tank and engine have already been removed. But this is going to get um, the high performance electric vehicle systems AC50. And with the Curtis 1238 controller, 650 amps, this will have uh, 36 of the Calb 180 cells. Take a look at the back here. Uh, these years have actually less uh, you know, accessibility to us because <clears throat> the rear apron doesn't remove and get out of the way, which is a nice feature on the earlier ones. Uh, 
you've got this piece here that's kind of in the way. So from, you know, just from our production standpoint, those things kind of, you know, just a convenience thing. I guess the flip side would be, you know, we don't have to remove the bumper and the apron. <laughs> So I guess for every pleasure there's a pain and vice versa. So anyway, this will be um, one that hopefully we can give you some more, you know, give you some updates along the way. Um, but that will remain to be seen. So let's... Um, So we'll have a, a battery pack underneath the back seat here, and then uh, one will go where the fuel tank was, and that's over the transaxle there, folks. Okay, you can see the straps; those, of course, will be removed. So there will be cells in that cavity, and then underneath the back seat. Those will be the only two places. So the only room that you would be losing. Is under the back seat that's where our battery box will go the rest of this will be just as it is now no changes the dash will basically look the same Let's get some new parts in here the mat looks new some of this looks new the door panels and stuff so you can see they're they're starting but like I said, a long ways to go. We've got some, looks like something got closed in the door there or something. So, the body's pretty rough. So that'll be a lot of work. Things like the bumpers, that's a bolt on. No worries. It's these long panels that become the work. And this one doesn't seem to be. Well, no, there's a paint job kind of <laughs> hides some of it. <laughs> but there are some, uh, there's some pretty good bruising going on here. This thing has, uh, uh, one thing about the old VWs, kind of remind me of the, the old Timex slogan, take a licking and keep on ticking. These things really, you know, they, they, they took the abuse. It was, uh, it was amazing how much, uh, how much you could really abuse these things. And, and not look like they were abused even. I mean, my folks took, uh, took us to Baja a few times in the one that we had, and it was amazing how that thing you know, went off-road. Good ground clearance, but a smoother ride than the, like the Broncos and stuff of the day that the Jeeps and stuff, those guys were getting, you get down to the, on the Baja Peninsula, past San Felipe, it's all rock, and they're getting beat up. And this thing just kind of bounced right over everything, just kind of bloop, 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 you know. But uh, yeah, great vehicles then and now. This one's going to have a new lease on life. We've got somebody who's going to fix it up. We're going to give it a new propulsion system. And this will be a vehicle that somebody will enjoy for many many years to come I'm sure and so we'll hopefully have time to give you a few little you know little lessons along the way kind of thing you know some maybe some insights uh, comments so anyway uh, if so, hope you join us, and, and I, I look forward to 
talking to you in the next one. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to share with you this 1972 VW bus is that it's <clears throat> kind of a transition. It was the end of an era. So, so 1972 VW bus and from 1950 to 1971, the buses featured a Type 1 engine. Starting in 1972, they went to the Type 4 engine. And uh, the Type 1 in 71 was uh, 1600 cc, 1 1.6 liter. And the uh, Type 4 in 72 was a 1.7, which over the years in the bus went up to a 2 liter. Um, and I believe that was by 1976. Um, and so it was kind of a transition year because they'd gone 21 years with the Type 1 engine. And so there's some purists that, uh, you know, they don't like them after 71. <laughs> They're no longer the button. There's those that like, you know, only like the, the split windshield. They don't like the, the bay window. So everybody has their preference, but yeah, I, I call it an end of an era, uh, ending in 1971. So this was actually the beginning of a new era with this 1972. Well, anyway, we're also going to share a few other things with you uh, along the way. And so, you know, as time has it and everything, this may be the only video we feature on this bus. I don't know. I can't predict the future. I'd like to give you a few more along the way, but we'll see how it goes. But while we're here, I'm going to share with you a little timeline, kind of the, a general timeline of a conversion and of this conversion. So let me uh, uh, realign the camera and we'll take a look at that. Here's the general timeline of this uh, conversion. We've got uh, the beginning here. We're going to order our components, um, get everything on its way. We're going to order the machine shop work, uh, which, you know, our adapter coupler and some other things that we have done at the machine shop. We're also going to uh, order our battery boxes from the fabrication shop and we're going to get all those things you know in the works because that's something we don't have control over it's done by an outside entity we don't do that in-house and so we'll get that uh, in the works well while you're waiting on that there's other things you can do and so like on this bus we're going to have to run some wiring from the engine bay where most of the components are going to be up to the front where our instrumentation uh, is going to be and some control circuits like you know reverse electronic reverse things like that so we're going to want to have you know some wiring that goes from front to rear so we can run that while we're waiting um, and it will, you know, so install our instrumentation, run the wiring, things like that. And then, of course, we'll start receiving parts. They'll come over a period of time. Um, and as we receive our parts, uh, we can start installing certain components. Uh, we know where things are going to go. So once they're received, we can put them in their locations. Like. Um, one of the first things we'll do is we'll install the charge port because we have those in stock. So we'll install the, the charge port. We know where the charger will go. When the charger comes in, we'll install that and connect that. Uh, the DC to DC converter, things like that will go in as they're received. Uh, and then once the parts come from the fab shop, one of, uh, you know, like I said, the battery boxes, uh, we're, we also have the uh, the motor mount. This has a rear motor mount uh, that they're going to weld and, and fabricate for us. Um, but once we get the battery boxes, 
we can install them in place. Um, and uh, then hopefully get the things from the machine shop, which means we can install the, the uh, adapter, coupler, flywheel, clutch, install the motor in the vehicle. Um, and in this time frame, uh, we usually see how things are going and we'll start bottom balancing the cells so that the cells are bottom balanced to kind of meet the same time as when the battery boxes are in place. So battery boxes get installed, cells that are bottom balanced get installed in the boxes. Um, and then once you have uh, the battery box installed, then we start running our high voltage cabling and stuff so that everything's cut exactly to length the way we want it and routed the way we want it. Um, uh, and then, you know, once the, uh, you know, the, the, the charger's in place, the battery's in place, your um, high voltage cabling's put in everything, uh, and our control circuitry is done, um, then we can charge the battery pack. Um, and one of the things that you're going to do, we're going to, you know, as we have the, you know, components uh, available and so forth, we'll start building sub-assemblies and so forth. Um, like I mentioned, the charging system, the DC to DC converter, the 12 volt uh, control circuitry and everything, which we've gone over in, in previous videos. We've showed you our demonstration board and so forth, talked about all the the safety uh, layers that go into the DC control and so forth, um, your safety interlock, all that kind of thing. So, you know, we're going to do all that as the components are available, as the time's available, so forth. And then, you know, basically one of the last things will be charging that battery pack. And once the battery pack is charged or has started to be charged, we can uh, program our controller. And so that's pretty much going to be it then. You know, we do uh, testing as we go along. And uh, there's some things you can't do until you get to the very end, of course. But anyway, that kind of, you know, it, it, it loosely laid out is the timeline for doing this conversion. And the big variable. Of course, they're plowing the field behind me now. I mean, it never fails. You know, I'm in a metal building. It either is a windy day when I try to do this and the thing rattles or it's raining and it makes a lot of noise. Or they're plowing the field behind me. It's crazy. Sorry for the noise. We're just about done here. So anyway, big variable in all this is the outside labor part. The fabrication shop, the machine shop. We can, you know, only hope that they get our stuff out quickly, but that's beyond our control. It's just getting way too noisy. See you next time.